beyond the Ateneo. And now, let's get ready to run down! Just Calm Music Ministry, your daily dose of inspiration. Follow Just Calm PH on Spotify and Just Calm Music on YouTube. We are also on iTunes and Deezer. Are you feeling sore? We can make that better. Tune in to the Ateneo Senior High School's first radio program, Soar, Soar. the Soar. Seniors On Air Radio, where you can listen to music you want straight from our playlists. Don't change that channel yet because Soar is ready to put the you in youth. Soar, Seniors On Air, here on Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. Do you sometimes feel confused or lost in the complications and complexities of life? Do you feel drained, listless, or exhausted from the daily burdens and responsibilities? Why not seek our campus ministers on air every Tuesday from 2 to 3 in the afternoon? Listen to our counselors from the Loyola School's campus ministry office as they ground our lives in our faith, in our school's spiritual tradition. Campus Ministers on Air. Be guided, be inspired, be blessed. Listen to our Campus Ministers on Air. Do you sometimes feel confused? or lost in the complications and complexities of life? Do you feel drained, listless, or exhausted from the daily burdens and responsibilities? Why not seek our campus ministers on air every Tuesday from 2 to 3 in the afternoon? Listen to our counselors from the Loyola School's campus ministry office as they ground our lives in our faith, in our school's spiritual tradition. Campus Ministers on Air. Be guided, be inspired, be blessed. Listen to our Campus Ministers on Air. The Voice of the Blue Eagle, Radyo Katipunan 87.9. The Jesuit Hour. 
Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour. po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our show here at Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. This is the Jesuit Hour and I'm your host, Father Nono Alfonso SJ. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Yes, it's uh, Tuesday. It's uh, February 23, 2021 and of course the uh, this week, uh, this long week, We are commemorating the 35th year anniversary of the 1986 People Power Revolution. Yes. Oh, oh. Edsa, nasaan ba kayo noon? Mga kapanalik, uh, mga kaibigan, and of course, dito po sa Atenea, no? we were very active during that time. Okay. Yan po ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. And of course, we have uh, as a resource person, somebody who's... Uh, in the middle of everything during that time. Okay, so, but before that, before we continue, we begin with our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the prayer for generosity of Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward. Save that of knowing that I do your will. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, son of shall be, world without end. Amen. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So later on, our resource person will explain to us why we chose that as our opening prayer, the prayer for generosity of St. Ignatius of Loyola. It wasn't random. It was for a reason that we chose that to open the show. My dear friends, as we commemorate the uh, 1986 EDSA People Power Revolution that toppled the Marcos dictatorship, martial law in the Philippines, and uh, as we mark its 35th year anniversary, wow, 35 years na po ang EDSA People Power. Uh, and of course, uh, you'll notice na wala pong masyadong nangyayari ngayon. Ano? There's, uh, I saw this morning, there was a circular from the Department of In- uh, Interior and Local Government, DILG, for encouraging LGUs to uh, hoist uh, the flag, the national flag in their offices uh, to commemorate in so far as possible in this situation of the pandemic. But uh, wala pong masyadong ano, no? wala pong masyadong pakulo. Of course, this Thursday is fiesta official, walang pasok. It's a holiday to mark nga the anniversary. But other than those that I already mentioned, are we still excited over the uh, People Power Revolution, which for the church, uh, especially around that time, in 1986, which for the church, the Edsa People Power was a gift from God. No, yun po ay regalo. Okay, so I remember even Bishop uh, Claver uh, comparing the 1986 Edsa People Power Revolution uh, to the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. So, ganun po, no? Uh, it was a gift, but are we still commemorating that gift? Okay, so to help us and uh, reflect And of course, uh, meron din po siyang ilo-launch na libro. Yan naman, no? Ang sipag po nitong ating guest. Let me introduce our resource person, interviewee this morning. He, he is an educator. He is known for being part of the uh, Constitutional Commission uh, that drafted the 1986 Constitution of the Philippines. He is also known for being a peace advocate, not just in the Philippines, a peace expert, peace worker, not just in the Philippines, but all over the globe, especially where there is conflict and tension. He is right there in the middle of it all. 
And of course, uh, I don't know what you will call this, a change of career. He is now a sports trainer, a, a sports enthusiast uh, at the other side of Metro Manila, no? of Manila. Okay, so, and of course, uh, simply put, he is a patriot. My dear friends, ang isa pong uh, pinagmamalaking Ateneo alumnus, walang iba kundi si Professor Ed Garcia. Good morning, Prof. Ang gandang umaga po, uh, Father Nono. Kumusta po kayo? Uh, mabuti po. Uh, kayo po. Uh, where are you now? Uh, right now? Right now, I'm at home. Uh, I haven't left the, the house um, not much really for almost one whole year because of the quarantine and because of my age. I'm 78 and still uh, still strong, still writing, oh, still sharing my yes. young people. Yes, and dami pong uh, halos taon-taon may sinusulat itong si Mr. Ed Garcia, si Prof. Ano? Well, uh, thanks to uh, the Jesuit Communication Foundation, well, uh, one of the first things I did with Father No No was this book, Courage, where uh, in part four, I talk about the people's unfinished journey, which is the Ed's uh, experience. And so we began uh, this story actually here in, uh, in uh, Courage, in the book published by the Jesuit Communication Foundation. It tells the story the night of February 22, 1986, when all of a sudden uh, the, the people must call. Okay. Uh, hello, Ed. Uh -huh. Together with the Simbahang Lingkod, the Jesuit seminarians. Uh, in, in this book, I spoke of the uh, of the um, the meeting on the 23rd of February at the house of uh, of uh, uh, Lorenzo Tanyada with Pepe Diocno and Joe Visalonga, which I happened to witness, and uh, it was really assessing what do we do. And from that meeting, uh, Lorenzo Tanyada went to see uh, Ponce Enrile and uh, Fidel Ramos. And when he was convinced that this was for real, then he, he helped to galvanize the militant, uh, nonviolent uh, participation of people. Mm -hmm. And we spent uh, three to four days there in the streets at EDSA. And I recall, uh, especially, I cannot forget the evening of the 24th, actually, or it was dawn, when there are seven Sikorsky helicopters uh, uh, were, they were in the sky and they landed uh, in Camp Karame and I thought it was going to be the end and so we were singing the Our Father yung ama namin kumakanta kami kasama nga sila Butch Aquino my, my dear friend Noel Tolentino and others but then uh, around 17 soldiers came out brandishing their their weapons but at the same time with white flags and saying uh, we are with you and that for me was a turning point. And so the next day, on the 25th, there were uh, two uh, there were two inaugurations, one in Malacanang and the other at Club Filipino where Cory Aquino was uh, sworn in as president by Chief Justice Tihanki. Mm -hmm. And so that, and uh, I remember the inauguration of uh, the former dictator Marcos uh, was blanked out because uh, people were able to uh, to put out the TV channel four at that time, <laughs> and so, you know the people uh, actually proclaimed uh, Cory as as pre president. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to Malacanang on the evening of the twenty fourth. I, I recall with Sila Butch Abad, uh, Noel Tolentino, and other friends and. And I recall the people's rejoicing. That was a long nightmare. Mm -hmm. Martial law declared in 72. And the people's power experience on the 25th of February, as you said, 35 years ago, uh, took place. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be a, a participant. But for me, uh, it did, not everything took place in, in, uh, during those four days. It all began for me, at least. Uh, in the first quarter storm yeah, uh, yeah. in 1972 when Lakas Diwa yeah. formed 
it was formed at Leola House of Studies. <laughs> That's why I was telling Father Nono the cross of St. Francis uh, was still uh, in my room, uh, Leola House of Studies. And I remember many of the Jesuits then were my companions, Father, at the time, the scholastic Tony Ledesma, mm -hmm. Archbishop Emeritus of Cagayan de Oro, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sandas Balchand, uh, the late, uh, the late um, um, uh, Joseph Francia, and many other, uh, you know, seminarians, including uh, Archie Intengan. He was also there in that meeting. So, but that, that's a good point to make, you know, uh, Professor Ed, that uh, the People Power Revolution uh, had a kumbaga, preparatory phase. Exactly. Uh, this was even before 1986, you know, uh, first quarter storm and so on and so forth. And that's very important you know, uh, to keep that in mind. Na merong paghahanda bago, uh, bago na nagkaroon ng EDSA revolution. In fact, there is a book in your campus, uh, Father Nono, uh, talking about the 11 uh, the ma martyrs from the Ateneo. Mm -hmm. yeah. There were many martyrs from the Ateneo who gave up their lives uh, precisely in the struggle against dictatorship and in the fight for human rights. Mm -hmm. so in that book, uh, you, you will find uh, the, uh, the Ateneo alumni who really gave their very best. Many of them were students at the college, yeah. and some were seminarians at San Jose. Yeah, yeah. House of Studies. So, hindi natulog yung Ateneo? Hindi po. Hindi. Ateneo was very much in the forefront. I, th I still remember very vividly when Colonel Tadiar <clears throat> wanted to bring in his men reinforcements to EDSA. I still recall Father Arevalo leading the seminarians, and they were kneeling down in prayer. And uh, the, the tanks couldn't come in. I still recall a conversation with one of the soldiers who only had one, uh, you know, he only had one, uh, one, one shoe, not a pair, but just one. And he was asking me, where are the communists? And then he saw a lot of seminarians and religious nuns and, uh, you know, they were, the, the boy was surprised. He had just been commandeered from the provinces to quell what he, what he was told was a communist revolution. In fact, it was a people's power effort. And there were many nuns and there were many mothers with rosaries in their hands. And so we were giving the soldiers uh, bottles of water and sandwiches. Yeah. And some nuns had flowers. Yeah. Those were uh, memorable days. Ah, pero Ed, no, uh, Professor, if I may ask you, no, I mentioned at the start of our program, na parang I don't even hear people talk about it anymore. Uh, not even in in radio or TV, you know. Uh, before, parang after EDSA, during this time of the year, grabe yung commemoration in media, no, uh, tributes and so on and so forth. What happened to us? Why? Uh, can't we feel excited anymore about uh, the uh, EDSA People Power Revolution? Well, first of all, I, I want to say, you know, in the column of Randy David la, this last Sunday, mm -hmm. he speaks about uh, EDSA lives and we, the fact that we still have a constitution, the People's Power Constitution of 1987, which still stands. I think it's a tribute to the fact that we, we have... You know, that, that is the rule of law, at least the, the, the order of the day, that people, that respect for the Constitution, which was drafted precisely in those difficult days after the people's power experience. Secondly, uh, th there is a tendency to forget. In fact, uh, I, I recall when we did a book uh, at the beginning of last year, uh, Stories of Struggle, uh, where we put our experiences together. I, I, I remember quoting uh, Milos Con, Mila Condera, the filmmaker. Yes. The strength of the people uh, is found in their remembering. Mm. We, we cannot forget. Uh, it is yeah. well to forget that things go back to, you know, to the way they were before. And mm. we cannot allow that to happen. And so for me, I rely on the young people. Okay. The strength of spirit. And that's why I, I believe in Radio Katipunan. It's so important for the radio. Thank you for saying that. 
really to really uh, refresh the memory of people, mm-hmm. to refresh their uh, you know their capacity uh, not to forget what took place, so that as we say, never again should there be human rights violations in that scale. Never again should there be disrespect for life, and that is the tragedy. Because we have a government uh, which very often uh, fails to respect human life, yeah, fails yeah. to respect uh, the dignity of the human person, fails to respect women, and fails to respect. You yeah, know, there is a moral meltdown in our midst, and the young people, uh, the young people in our midst, uh, they are the ones who I think who are you know challenged, challenge uh, to to continue what is an unfinished journey of our people. Before we talk about uh, your new book, um, 35 years, that's uh, sa inyo pong mag-asawa, no? 35 years is uh, jade. Diba? <laughs> <laughs> so, what is significant about this for you, this 35th year anniversary of EDSA? What is significant? Well, for me, uh, what is significant, first of all, is my gratitude to God. Mm-hmm. You know, our people... In spite of everything, we, you know, unlike, let's say, Myanmar or other places that, that I have worked in, there is no outright civil war fighting in the streets. We are grateful that in spite of everything, our people have remained more or less united. Of course, we are divided by political persuasions, but we are united in spirit. We yeah. are a people that refuse to battle it out in the streets like what's happening in our neighboring uh, states or, or in Middle East or Africa. Secondly, I'm grateful to God. You know, Father, uh, one of my teachers was the historian uh, Horacio de la Costa. Wow. Mm-hmm. Of our jewels of the pauper, uh, our faith in our music. And, and, and for me, I'd like to add a third, a third jewel of the pauper which is our youth. You know, I have been a teacher for, for, for as long as I remember from the days with the Lord, the summer of service, and all the things I used to do with my students. And uh, for me, I believe that our young people, those who are young right now and those who are young ones, you know, they, they are committed to our, to our uh, you know, to our country. Mm-hmm. Especially during the pandemic, the small acts of kindness, the service of people in the front lines. And that's why I, I insist that what we need today really are servant leaders. Yon. This is really, uh, you know, the goal of, uh, of uh, the EDSA experience. We wanted to, to forge a new way of doing politics, a brave brand of leadership that is serving, uh, listening to others, and serving others. And that's what I believe that, uh, you know, my, my Ignatian formation gave me was a belief that uh, to serve others, you, you know, you, you had to give all magis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mag- which I, 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 you know, is imprinted in my heart. Okay. And so magis really is what this whole thing is all about. You know, what the Ed's experience for me is magis, the people's capacity to show greater love in a peaceful way. I remember, ours was among the very first, if not the first, peaceful uh, overthrow of a dictatorship. Yeah. And after that, you know, I did a study. You had other at least 14 to 15 major upheavals in Eastern Europe, in Poland and uh, in, uh, in Georgia in uh, uh, Latvia, Estonia, and then also in the Middle East and uh, in other parts of the globe that were, all of them were inspired by the people's power experience. So, yeah. so for me, that's those 35 years, you know, should make us proud, mm-hmm. make us proud that uh, we are Filipinos. Amen. Uh, let, let me ask you therefore, uh, Professor, you, know, you mentioned servant leaders, what we need are servant leaders. Because people are saying that uh, the reason why EDSA failed, it's because the leaders failed uh, their constituencies. Uh, so what kind of leadership? Mga trapo raw, ano? Para nagpalit lang tayo ng mga mukha. 
it's the same kind of politics, as you mentioned, it's the same kind of leadership. Uh, but of course, we're promoting now yung servant leadership. Even the church mentions this uh, all the time, you know, servant leadership. And you wrote a book recently. Uh, uh, let me show the uh, public. Ito po ang, ang sipag po ni Professor Ed Garcia, servant leader, Lenny Robredo, uh, of course, written by Mr. Ed Garcia and editor, another Atenista, Danton Remoto, published by San Anselmo Press. Okay, so let's define first, uh, Kuya Ed, what do we mean by servant leadership? What is this brand of leadership like? Well, first of all, uh, I, I, I want to you know, give examples. You know? Okay. A servant leader, uh, first of all, is one who listens. Mm -hmm. Very important to listen and to consult with people on the ground. Because the, the, first, the, the major actor in any democracy is the citizen. The citizen is the most important actor in a democratic society. And a servant leader must listen. Nakikinig. Oh, nagtatanong. Yes. Consulta. You know, listens to people listens to science, you know, listens to the people who understand what's going on, is willing to acknowledge mistakes, willing to acknowledge shortcomings, you know, has the humility. So the capacity to listen, the humility to accept mistakes, and third, you know, the, the, the willingness to work effectively with others. Mm -hmm. because you, you, you cannot lead by doing it alone. In fact, Nelson Mandela said, you know, I want to lead. There go my people. I must follow them. Now, in other words, uh, you, you must have that capacity. But at the same time, you must have the decisiveness, a principled decisiveness that is based on conviction, based on conscience. So that if at times you have to make a decision that is really painful or difficult, then you can say, Sometimes the majority is one man or one woman with courage because you're able to stand up for what you believe is right. And then finally, uh, you know, what really is important at the, at the end of the day is to have that vision, you know, that long-term vision, not one, of, uh, not one based on on patronage or personalities, but a vision of building a better future worthy of our children. In other words, kailangan meron siyang marathon mentality. Even if at times, no, it's a marathon in the mud. So sometimes it's very difficult. Pero the, the, the servant leader must be willing to serve, as, as they say in Latin America, hasta las últimas consecuencias you know, until the very last consequences. In fact, if you, when you show this book to, the, to your audience, mm -hmm. the, the, the cover really is a symbol by the artist Leste Lecaros of, of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. Wow. It's the washing of the feet. Uh, because that is, you know, the, the way in which a servant leader operates. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you said that the qualities of uh, servant leaderships, uh, leadership are number one, capacity to listen, uh, capacity to accept humbly uh, one's mistakes, to work with others, cooperate, uh, courage, of course, and vision. Can you, before we talk about, uh, of course, your featured leader in this book is the Vice President, Lenny Robredo. Kababayan ko po, so I'll be biased as well. <laughs> but... Uh, and I, I know the husband personally. Pero uh, other examples uh, in, in right now, uh, whether political or economic leaders, do you have other examples that you can share? Yes, of course, you know, uh, first of all, uh, we have had uh, a number of, of women leaders in our midst today that are quite inspiring. Uh, Jacinda Ardern, you know, I... I was a teaching fellow at the University of Otago in New Zealand. And I recall uh, Jacinda Ardern was then a, an aspiring young political leader. And, you know, the first thing she did when there was a bombing in, uh, in Christchurch 
in New Zealand was to go out and embrace the Muslims who were the target of hate crime that resulted in 50 people being killed. And she, she embraced them as fellow New Zealanders, the capacity to, to, to show compassion and concern and to work with them, uh, consulting them in how to rebuild their city. And then um, Jacinda Ardern also in, in, the, in the way in which she dealt with the pandemic, you know, was very, yeah. Yeah. very, very effective. And uh, she is an example of a servant leader, I believe. You know, in the past, of course, you had Nelson Mandela, who mm -hmm. was 27 years uh, in jail. I worked in South Africa mm -hmm. when Nelson Mandela was under house arrest. For, and, and, uh, but first of all, 27 years in Robben Island. Mm -hmm. and we, ha we had a mission to help forge an uh, election that would be fair uh, to everyone, blacks and whites. And Nelson Mandela was a servant leader. And then you have Vashlav Havel. Vashlav Havel, who defined hope, you know, as a, a very important ingredient of leadership. And Vashlav Havel, uh, then uh, Czechoslovakia, tried to bring his people together. And there are a number of servant leaders. In uh, You have them in Iceland. You have them in the Nordic countries, women uh, leaders especially who showed uh, their if capacity to lead and, and the courage not to be defied, uh, you know, by the odds. Okay. So for me, those three, you know, courage, hope, and love and concern, you know, the, these are qualities also that you find in the certain leaders today. Uh, okay. So um, going back to your book uh, then, um, why did you focus on uh, Vice President Lenny Robredo? Um, as well, your featured servant leader in this book. Well, let, let me let me tell you the story um, because it's a very interesting story. I, I was for 20 years working with Amnesty International and International Alert. Before I, you know, before then, I, I was a teacher both at the Ateneo College uh, or together with Father Joy De Leon, we were doing classes in sociology. And then uh, I also taught at the University of the Philippines. One of my former students was Lenny Robredo. She was very shy in sophomore. Uh, in fact, when I talked to her recently, I said to her, you know, you were, you were, I still recall you, you were at the back of the class and you were one of the shyest. And, uh, and uh, so I re-encountered her, you know, during the campaign early, I think January or February of 1986. And so she was running for vice president. And so we had that re-encounter and I decided to start writing. The very first article I wrote about Lady Robredo was choice of conscience. Among the, among the vice presidential candidates, there were five senators and only one was a woman. And so I, 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 I wrote an article, choice of conscience. And in fact, in the very first line, you know, this is very interesting, the very first line, you know, in the article that I, which I included here, the first line says this, you know, the 1986 People's Power Experience was the game changer in Lenny Robredo's life. You know, when I had her in class, Nino Aquino had just been killed. And I recall there was a decree by the dictator Marcos at that time. He said, if people, if more than five people assemble anywhere, you will be arrested. Okay. And so the former senator, the late senator, Pepe Diokno, went to UP. And he, he assembled students at the foot of the AS building. And I remember bringing down my class and I said to them, all right. Let's defy the order and let's all go down and we should be more than five. <laughs> and so we were there in the steps. You know, and so, so the education of Lenny Robredo actually took place more outside the classroom than in. <laughs> yeah. And then later on, she decided to, you know, when she graduated in 86, she decided to give back, you know, went back to the province and then went to apply for a job. And the mayor then was Jesse Robredo, and that's how their love story begins, you know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, you know, uh, it, it was this uh, 
re-encounter with Lenny Robredo, former student who becomes a candidate for vice president. So I wrote about, about her and I continued to write about her when she became vice president. So I followed her improbable journey yeah. from percent she became she became uh, you know the the choice of the people for vice president and then finally uh, she was ousted from from the cabinet but she still took to her to her you know she did not uh, she was not faced by this she was not afraid and then when she was appointed uh, to be the co-chair of the of the group working against illegal drugs she again worked but she was deposed after only 19 days, but she yeah. fought hard. She yeah. showed her capacity to, to lead. And so I, I compiled all of these uh, articles I was writing. And so I, I decided, when I looked at all the articles, I said, we are ready for a book. All I need now is a framework. And so I was thinking, what's the best framework? And so I found the Ignatian Prayer of Generosity, which is yeah. my prayer, to yeah. be Work. And so the first chapter, first part, is to give and not to count the cost. The second chapter or second part of the book is to fight and not to heed the wounds. And then the third is to toil and not to seek for rest. And would you believe, when we were presenting the book to Vice President Lenny, she said, on the 5th of October, 2015, I texted to all my friends when I accepted the, the, the challenge to, to run. <clears throat> and do you know what I wrote? She said, to give and not to count the cost. So without, you know, I wrote this book behind Lenny Robredo's back. You know, she did not know I was writing this book. And, uh, and I was so amazed that we, we, you know, there was a congruence. There was a confluence of events because this was my framework. And this was also her prayer. So yeah. I not know that the Ignatian prayer of generosity brought so many people together. And so she, she could identify, you know, with the Ignatian prayer of generosity. But of course, uh, Professor Ed, you know what the Jesuits think about that prayer. It's a very difficult prayer. And uh, Jesuits would tell you, do not uh, take that prayer seriously because the Lord may just grant you what you ask for. Yes. <laughs> That's a very difficult prayer. Uh, oh, yeah. I, and not to count the cost, yeah. But anyway, we can see that in, in her life as a servant. And also to toil and not to seek for rest. Yes. Look at the book. I have two postscripts. You know, the, the book has two postscripts. The first postscript is about her work. You know, the first postscript is about her work during the pandemic and mm -hmm. how she served the frontliners and did everything possible to yeah. perform service, selfless yep. service for others. Yep. Second yep. Postscript, well, well, this book was on the press. Do you, do you, do you know what happened uh, while this was on the press? The, the, the typhoon came. And so I had a second postscript. <coughs> on, November, on November 15th, uh, while the book was on the press, there, was a typh there were several typhoons actually. So, we, so I said, stop press. So I wrote another page, which is postscript, post-typhoons, because she was visiting uh, yeah. different yeah. places in Bicol and then different places in, yeah. in Cagayan province uh, to meet with the people, to, to show her concern, mm -hmm. her compassion, and her service. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I added those two postscripts. Buti na lang na-publish na po kasi... Uh, patuloy pa yung kwento ni Vice President Lenny baka madagdagan pa yung mga post scripts mo like uh, finally getting that wonderful Supreme Court decision on uh, the protest against her uh, Professor um, meron, meron ba kayong inside story how in fact she won the election no? uh, because that's uh, an amazing story um, in the surveys uh, I think uh, early on, ano, dun sa uh, candidacy niya, yes. she was like uh, one percent lamang, ano, uh, unbelievable. But then she she was elected, uh, and now we know from the Supreme Court decision that she was the uh, choice of the majority. I I, I try to explain yeah. how improbable 
journey, her victory. Yes. Page 12 of this book. Mm -hmm. And there are factors which I mention here. So I will give you a, a, a preview of the book. The first factor is her narrative. Uh, alam nyo, si, si Lenny is a natural storyteller. VP Lenny is a natural, natural storyteller okay. she, about her life. And she connects to people. You know, it's amazing the way she speaks, especially in Filipino. Para ba siya nagkukwento lang? Nakukwento niya yung buhay niya. She was an ordinary provinciana. She was from Coleo Santa Isabel yeah. in Bicol. She goes to UP. She's very shy. She's a provinciana. And I can say that because she was in my class. And then she graduates in 86. She goes back to Bicol. And then she marries uh, a mayor. And yet she still does service. After she passes the bar, she goes back to the Saligan, you know, the, the volunteer legal group working with the Sumila farmers and so on. And, you know, she continues to work on the fringes of society. Her narrative, she becomes a widow. She tells the story. She becomes a widow with three daughters. And she keeps her poise. And then she's asked to run for Congress. And she does. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when she's asked to rise as vice president, she takes the risk after getting the approval of her daughters. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is the narrative. You know, the people understood her story and they wanted to support this woman. Number two, number two was message. You know, in this, in this page, talks about the message. So her message was very simple. You know, I am ready. Are you ready for me? You know, I, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to give my very best. You know, I, I, I do not come from a political family or dynasty. You know, I, I, I am here to serve. You know, if you, if you wish me to serve with all my best, with all my might, you know, then vote for me. And then lastly, her campaign. You know, I was a volunteer during her campaign, you know. You know there were lolos for Lenny. <laughs> there, were, there were motorcades, you know, there were chinelas. Chinela, uh, Chinela style leadership uh, kind yeah. of uh, uh, discussions, going to the markets. Her campaign was was uh, propelled on the power of ordinary citizens. And so for me, those three are very important, you know, for to understand her victory. And then she was also brilliant in the debates because I recall, you know, when she was uh, debating, uh, there were two specific lines that really struck me. Is when she said at the end of the debate, and the last man standing is a woman. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, was yeah. that was brilliant and people remembered her. And in fact, here, here is a photo, a picture of, uh, of Lenny Robredo uh, speaking. And then with these two, uh, you know, uh, Chis Escudero who was also my student and also from Sorsogon. And you had Bombo Marcos, mm -hmm. this picture. And so, uh, you know, it's, um, it's amazing because uh, people could empathize. People, yeah. she could connect with people. And uh, nobody gave her a chance. Yeah. Her opponents were very well known. They had won in previous national campaigns. That was her first national election. Yeah. And, okay. and therefore, there were, you know, people from different parts of the country who wanted her to lead. Yung ano po, ano, uh, may uh, another question that I'd like to ask you, ano, uh, I'd like insights from you. What about the death of Jesse Robredo? Yeah. Uh, of course, as a, as, as a wife, as a, as a partner of Jesse Robredo, it would have great, great personal impact. But as a, a leader, a servant leader, no? paano po yun, paano siya na-influensya noon? No? Uh, nung kamatayan nung, uh, ni, ng pinakamamahal niyang si Jesse Robredo? Al alam nyo, Father Nono, uh, tragedy, you know, is very difficult to bear. Yeah. You know, I, I, I lost a son, an eldest son, in a yeah. tragic accident. And although that happened more than 25 years ago, I still bear the scars of that death. Mm -hmm. And so, Lenny Robredo, you know, suffered the death of her hus husband in a plane crash. Yeah. It could devastate anyone. But yeah. yet he held her, you know, she 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 she, she was of she had the capacity 
to brave the most difficult adversity. Yeah, yun yung nakakabilib sa kanya eh. Uh, kasi uh, kamamatay lang nung uh, pinakamamahal niya. And, and yet she's thrust uh, into politics. And you know, uh, talagang courageously uh, faces the odds, etc. Uh, for for some, uh, hindi ko naman sabi, weaker individuals, di ba? Uh, Magano na lang yan. Mag, uh, they'll shy away from the public glare and just nurse the the wound, di ba? But but this woman, uh, because she felt that she was being called to serve uh, uh, ano ano parang hindi na lang nagluksa <laughs> uh, cut short her mourning her grieving and uh, ayan ito uh, embraced politics one of the race during the martial law years i remember whenever a, a companion was killed transformed grief into courage wow wow yani robredo uh, you know she transformed her grief into courage And she was supported by her three daughters. If you read the letters of her two daughters in the book, Aika and Trisha, they speak of tough love. No, she was a mother who loved them and yet who was tough on them, who, who raised them up to be independent, not to be afraid of the adversities that came in their lives. And so what she did was to transform a risk into an opportunity. It's very similar to what, what Pope Francis said, to see... To see things in a new in a new light, you know, like the pandemic, you know, the pandemic is a tragedy for many people. It's a very difficult time, and yet it's an opportunity, you know, it's it's an opportunity to to transform the old world into a different world. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's also very similar to what uh, the Jesuits in the Ignatian year, which begins on um, uh, on May 22, I believe, of this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the motto that was chosen by the congregation, uh, led by Father General Sosa uh, from Venezuela, is to see all things new in Christ. To see all things new in Christ. And in a sense, that is what Lenny did, you know, to see all things new, you know, it, the, uh, transforming risk into opportunity, yeah. transforming a tragedy into a moment of grace. Mm-hmm. It's also what the what my teacher Father Arevalo uh, taught us, Kairos. Kairos is an opportune moment of grace. Yeah, yeah. So, so the death of of Jesse Robredo was transformed into a Kairos, yeah. a moment of grace, where this ordinary woman who came from the provinces offers herself to our people to serve, yeah. and the people embraced her. Yeah. And so you know there are many things in life that are very difficult to explain. You know, because much of life is is both mystery and magic. And I, really admire, oh, I really admire her courage. In another way, pa, no, uh, Professor, no, like uh, she wins the vice presidency. Uh, of course, it's uh, put into protest by you know, uh, by the opponent. But no, uh, her her suffering doesn't end there. Uh, she's relentlessly. Uh, shamelessly attacked by uh, the president by no less than the president ano, and and this administration sabi nyo nga no parang uh, humiliated her by kicking her out of the cabinet and so on and so forth and yet grabe no she parang she steeled herself parang wala no uh, as as you said parang unfazed by all of this inaapi na siya di ba pero she She stood strong. She, she followed Michelle Obama's dictum. When they give you love, yeah. you take the, high road. Yeah. take the high road. And you know what is amazing about her is that she doesn't, you know, she doesn't give you back by the uh, blow by blow. Hindi eh. She's resilient. She has the capacity to take it on and okay. not to be you know, You know, I have read so many, many vicious things uh, against her. And, uh, I and am daughters, they even attack their do- her daughters. Attack her daughters, and uh, and yet she, you know, she remains strong and resolute. Yeah. Uh, in fact, this is so funny, you know. You know, I, you know, as an author, I wrote this book as dispassionately as I could, and as objectively as I could, and yet, you know, 
so many trolls have viciously attacked the author, you know, attack. And yet, para sa akin, that shows you the book is effective, you know. Yeah. <laughs> shows you that what you're doing is, you know, doing things in the right way. Okay. And you don't hit back. And that's what I, I believe VP Lenny has shown. That, uh, you know, especially when there are sex jokes or, or many vicious lies being told about her, she just keeps doing what she ought to do or what she wants to do or what she can do effectively and doesn't waste time hitting back. Yeah. It's, uh, especially what I call a moral meltdown in our leadership. There are people in government who are able to speak, you know, the foulest kind of language Mm-hmm. even the leaders of our church and therefore it, this is below that's why I call it a moral meltdown and then you have to have leaders who have the capacity to rise above the fray yeah. to be example to our children uh, no, no, Professor Ed no, um, uh, people ask nga, no, aside from Vice President Lenny for example who are still in the opposition no? Parang she's a lone voice in the wilderness Well, there are other leaders like Vico Soto of Pasig, the mayor who also was in the school of government at the Ateneo. Yeah. Then you have Bagao, you know, of the Magat Island. Uh, she was also a lawyer of Saligan. So there are there are a number of good local leaders who can be found and are are actually good allies. Uh, you have Kit Belmonte in Quezon City, a uh, congressman from one of the districts of Quezon City. And so I think we all have to prepare. 15 months from now will be the electoral season. Mm-hmm. A lot of discernment, you know, the discernment of Bishop, uh, Archbishop Tony Ledesma actually during the last elections of 2016 gave the five C's, you know, for for discernment of of candidates who want to present themselves for public office. Yeah, competence, you know, uh, conscience, compassion, character, and then capacity to to work well with others. Okay. And, you know, it's very important to have that uh, discernment, you know, of mm. when you are also yeah. uh, looking for servant leaders in our midst. I really hope that people see, uh, see through... Uh, this government and of course see uh, Vice President Lenny Robredo and her integrity, moral integrity, sincerity to serve and so on and so forth. Ito po, ano, uh, Professor Ed, yung laylayan, how did she come up with that? Uh, you know, since she was already working with Saligan and also working in, uh, uh, in Bicol, her focus was uh, to work with the people on the fringes of society. What she says, uh, gusto ko magtrabaho sa mm-hmm. uh, ang mga kababayan natin na sa laylay ng lipunan. What, what is actually funny was uh, she was also working sa laylay ng tamhalan. <laughs> she was, yeah, yes. <laughs> she was a person working uh, with the, the people, the vulnerable people in the fringes of society and she was on the fringe of government. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it's that uh, capacity to to work effectively wherever she was, and, and she has the, one of the lowest budgets in government. Her yeah, budget yeah. is almost non-existent, yeah. and she relies on volunteer assistance coming from many people. Like the proceeds of this book, you know, uh, go to her projects. You know, and uh, San Anselmo Press contributes also. Mm-hmm. You know. A corresponding uh, amount to to help with her projects, and so this is very uh, amazing kind of uh, volunteer mm-hmm. volunteer spirit. Tell us, uh, tell us, Professor Eden, um, what about the role of faith in her political life? Uh, of course, she's a Bicolana. She loves Ina, Our Lady of Peña Francia, like so like all Bicolanos. But uh, can you just uh, share with us, uh, if you were able to interview her about this, the role of uh, the faith, the Catholic faith in her life, especially in her political life? Well, first of all, I, I already gave you a very important example. Uh, 
when she decided to run for for public office, you know, as a candidate for vice president, the first the first uh, phrase that she uttered publicly and sent out to all her friends. In fact, she showed us the the you know her phone, my, my the text that she sent to all her friends. It was from a prayer to give and not to count the cost. That was the Ignatian prayer of generosity. That first the yung bang parang that was her magnificat you know para basta na session you know when you are chosen to be the handmaid of the lord you know this is my my prayer her prayer was all right to give and not to count the cost asking for the grace that uh, saint ignatius uh, you know prayed for to to have that spirit of generosity secondly when tragedy uh, tragedy struck her first recourse was to prayer <clears throat> her first recourse whenever things were difficult together with her daughters you know in prayer so for for me uh, that is truly amazing you know that uh, prayer number three, <clears throat> you know faced with difficulties or with difficult challenges you know Lenny Robredo, Vice President Lenny Robredo, did not hit back in anger. Yes, yes. But she had what is known, uh, you know, in in the modern parlance as mindfulness, the space of silence, you know, in uh, in every in every Christian's life, because silence is where God speaks to you. Like when you, you know, you, you know, as Jesuit scholastics, I remember we used to meditate. You have the examine of conscience at noon. You have the meditation in the morning and you have prayers in the evening, you know, the Vespers prayers. And then it's always a space for silence. And then finally, you know, I want to give you a, an example that's closer to home. When she was being fi- uh, being charged with sedition, it says you were at the Ateneo conspiring to uh, to plot. He yeah. says, go to the Ateneo to hear Mass. I go to the Ateneo to pray. So that was what that was her answer to the charge that why did you go to the Ateneo to to uh, to conspire with the Ocho Derecho candidates? And her answer was, yes, I go to the Ateneo, but I go to the Ateneo to pray. Yeah, yeah. Mass at the Jesu. So you know, this is a very interesting uh, response. You know, in other words, uh, you know, the the especially to your question about uh, a life of faith. Okay, may mga reactions lang po tayo, ano, professor, ano, sabi ni uh, Sister Diding, uh, thank you so much, nadagdagan ang kaalaman namin kay uh, Lenny Robredo. Sabi naman po, nang, uh, hindi po nawapangalanan, sabi niya, if only the officers of the Liberal Party can appreciate uh, Vice President Lenny the way uh, Professor Ed does. <laughs> uh, let's talk about that uh, in another episode ano pero uh, so professor na yung pong nanonood sa atin ano um eto do you have uh, are you uh, privy to uh, her decision is she running is she running for presidency uh, next year you know any any same person would say uh to to run for the highest office in the land is you know is is never easy task and i think if you ask her right now she would hesitate she would say no and she would prefer to to go back to be mother to her three daughters and to also have a more peaceful life yeah we have to create a groundswell we have to ask her you have sacrificed so much already yeah. we yeah. want to go the extra mile but it's a prayer you know i mean uh, she we have to respect her her decision she i remember in one instance she told me you know the presidency is destiny so she really doesn't prepare she just does her work and she says uh, in the, if the time comes you know she's ready and then uh, her question is are you ready for me <laughs> and so I, I just wanted to end on a note of uh, the three poets you know there are three poets who, who yes. Yes. You know, the first one was uh, the first one was the the poem written by Jimmy Abad. Jimmy Abad, yes. Jimmy Abad, who was a former 
he was a former Jesuit, he was a Jesuit novice, and he wrote the poem here, which is uh, the spirit, you know, so Jimmy Abad, you know, a great poet from UP says, the spirit be with you, Lenny Robredo. So that's the first poet uh, who we featured here who wrote about Lenny Robredo. I asked him and he, he complied. And then Paring Bert Alejo. Albert Alejo, yes. Paring Bert wrote two poems here. Mm -hmm. One was about, you know, uh, in Filipino, he wrote the poem and uh, it's about uh, waking up, you know, uh, to, and the other one was about the prayer of St. Francis for peace, which he put into Filipino. Yeah. Finally, there is another poet, Jim Pascual Agustin, who wrote this poem that was, uh, that was inspired by this, by this uh, picture of, of Lenny Robredo waiting for the bus to go to Bicol. You know, yeah. he was waiting for the bus. And so uh, the title of the poem is waiting for the bus, a poem for Lenny. Yeah, these are the three poets, and of course you have the uh, you have the uh, artist, you know uh, Celeste Lecaros, yeah, who, who paints this beautiful picture of of uh, of VP Lenny, and there are a, a number of paintings in the book which you know she she did brilliantly. And uh, it's the same, uh, she's an amazing uh, painter. And she's now, would you believe, uh, uh, Father Nono, she's now painting St. Ignatius. Oh, really? Wow. It'll be the cover uh, of St. Ignatius offering his sword. Remember the, at the top of the hill after Jesuit Communications Foundation is a statue of, of, uh, of St. Ignatius offering his sword. Because the next book we're editing together with Jimmy Abad and Ruben Habito, you know, is entitled Companions, XJ Narratives. <laughs> and, and the cover is uh, St. Ignatius offering his sword and his companions, all of whom, the ones who, who, who wrote it, around 25 of us, former Jesuits. Wow. You know? And we feel, and uh, Father Tony Moreno said, uh, the president of the Asia Pacific Conference of, uh, of religious superiors, they, they have adopted our book, Companions, as part of their initiative for the Ignatian year from May of 2021 to July 31st of 2022. Yeah. We say in our preface in that book uh, is to see all things new in Christ, which is the motto of the Ignatian year. Okay. So, uh, abangan po natin yan. But in the meantime, uh, your uh, Current book is Servant Leader, Lenny Robredo, by Mr. Ed Garcia, editor Danton Remoto. It's available. It's uh, published by San Anselmo Press, and it's available sa mga bookstores po, and you can order also sa... It's available uh, the uh, Facebook of uh, San Anselmo Press. Yes. Because okay. sometimes many people are not able to go to the bookstore because of the quarantine. Oo. <laughs> Pwede pong i-order sa Grab, uh, and uh, sa mga ano po, ano, uh, social media platforms. Maraming salamat po, Professor Ed, once again. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your books. Very productive pandemic for you. Thank you so much. Maraming pong salamat, Father Nono. And thank you for publishing Courage. Courage, yes. Jesuit Communication Foundation. Okay, we'll see you. We'll see more of you. Uh, sa mga susunod pong mga buwan at uh, taon. Maraming salamat po, uh, Professor Ed. Next month, Father Nono, yung companions, gawin natin. Ed, sure. Uh -huh. uh, Ruben Habito, who is in Texas, and Naku. Jimmy Abad. Naku, baka sumali ako sa mga ex na yan, ha? Huwag, <laughs> <laughs> huwag naman. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Hanggang sa muli, ingat po kayo. Thank you. Okay. Maraming salamat po kay Professor Ed Garcia and uh, thank you for watching us or listening to us mga katipuneros. Hanggang sa muli po, this has been the Jesuit Hour. Sa Thursday po, wala tayong pasok. Walang pasok ang Ateneo. So we are off the air because it's Fiesta Official. I'll see you again 
sa March na, no? uh, next month na po yan, uh, next week is March already, I'll see you again, uh, Tuesday. Maraming salamat po. Until then, this has been the Jesuit Hour and Father Nono Alfonso SJ. Bye-bye! Oh, thank you. Salamat po. Thank you. The Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour.